First up, the Globe Spotlight team is at it again, uncovering hundreds of potential cases of sexual abuse dating back decades. This latest investigation focused not on the Catholic Church, but on private schools across New England. The Spotlight team identified more than 200 survivors at at least 67 private schools in the region. Among them are former students of the Fessenden School, a day and boarding school for boys, which is located in West Newton, and where school administrators now say at least 17 people have complained about abuse by former employees, including a former assistant headmaster, two teachers, the head of the Glee Club, and a school psychologist. Joining me now are two of those former students, Adrian Hooper and John Sweeting. Gentlemen, thank you very much for being here. They were their lawyer, Mitchell Guy Rabidian, who also represented, as you know, many survivors of the Catholic Church abuse scandal and is portrayed in the movie Spotlight. Mitchell, thank you for being thank here, you. too. Uh, gentlemen, uh, starting with you, Adrian, as much as you're comfortable or as little as you're comfortable, can you tell us what happened to you at Fessenden? Well, the whole student body was kind of a, a Lord of the Flies culture. So not only were the students it was either be a bully or not be a bully. The teachers were, were cruel. Uh, Claude Hasbrook was my dorm master. Uh, I had a problem with uh, bedwetting. I was 12, 13 years old. Uh, he used to, uh, uh, he had a Nazi flag hanging in his room and other memorabilia. Uh, he used to give what was called chinnies to kids. He'd grab you yeah. under here drag you around the room, grab you by the hair, drag you around the room. Uh, after my, one of my wet bed, wet bed wedding incidences, mm -hmm. he uh, had me lower my, he brought me into his room, had me lower my drawers and my underwear uh, and paddled me with a paddle, uh, telling me that he got nice. He said, you gotta get this wet bed wedding under control. Um, and he started stroking my penis uh, and being very nice. And then when I got an erection, he squeezed my testicles so hard that they hurt. Did you ever tell anybody? No. Until recent times? Just this past year. John, how about you? Well, it all started from, with me when I went to school. I went there to play hockey. This was like, you know, Bobby Yorm and the Big Bad Bruins, you know, and I was a great hockey player. And uh, I had scored some goals, you know, and that night I got to sit at the headmaster's table. To my right sat Arthur Claridge, me to his left. Uh, Coffin, assistant headmaster, right? Assistant headmaster Cl Claridge, yes. Mm. Uh, to my left was uh, uh, the headmaster, Robert P.T. Coffin. To his left was his wife, Lady Coffin, and then Nat Coffin, Nathaniel Coffin. And uh, he was telling me, he's going... Uh, wow, John, you know, you did really great, you know, uh, you scored some goals. And he started, t he put his le right hand on my leg at the dinner table. There's everybody there. And he he's taunting, he's patting me. The third pat, he had his hand in my crotch. And then with Arthur Claridge, and I just froze, but then with Arthur Claridge, see, he groomed my parents first. That's what these people do, okay? They, they groom the parents first, and then they groomed me. So he started taking me on rides, you know, in his Corvette shifting the gears and all that, you know. And then one night, um, after showers, because he always worked the showers, he wore glasses, he wore sweatpants, he would have an erection in the, in the shower, and all the kids knew it. We're all sitting out there handing mm -hmm. out the towels to us. So he comes up in my room one night, and he, I had the cold. My roommate wasn't there, um, and, he, and he sat down next to my bed, said, John, your nose is all stuffed up. I said, yes. He reads into his bag, and he pulls out a Vicks nose inhaler, and he tells me to breathe deeply, yeah. right? So I did. And then I woke up, and the man was uh, performing oral sex on me and masturbating on the side of the bed. And I come to, and I screamed, what the frig are you doing? And he fell off the bed pulling his pants up, yelling, it's lights out, it's lights out. And, uh, and then, you know, that was what happened. And then he made future advances at me one time, and this is, finally he stopped. Uh, he, he was chasing me in the room, so, telling me, at first it was like, oh, come here, Johnny, you know you want me, you know? Um, and, uh, and then he got real, real, real physical, and uh, he said, uh, you know, he's trying to catch me, he said, come here, you little, S, right? 
And, the, and then he cornered me, and the only thing I had was to my right on the windowsill, a thing of pencils. And I grabbed the pencil, and I looked at him, and I started growling because I was cornered. And I told him, I said, come get me, you queer. And I went at him, and he went running out of the room, okay? And uh, that's when the mental abuse started, and, and the, they old? starved me. I was 12 years old when he raped me. The grooming started in 1969 how, how at 11. Were you? Uh, I was 11, 12 years old when I first went to the you, school. You told your mother she didn't believe the it. Next day, and then I, you went to Coffin himself, the headmaster. What he said to you? Uh, he basically, this is what he did. He was smoking a pipe, and uh, he sound he sounded just like Burgess, Burgess Meredith and the Batman, you know, uh -huh. stuff. You know, he, and he goes, "Come now, Johnny, come now. You have a vivid, vivid imagination. You're making this up." And then he threw me out of his office, and he did the same thing to my sister when she saw abuse going on in school. Mr. Garbedian, what are your what do you want? What are your clients? These are decades ago. It was a letter in 2011 by the new headmaster of the school that caused them to come forward here with great courage, I should say, to come forward. What, what do you want here? What are your clients want? Truth, wanting? transparency. We want to see the records. We want to see Fezzenden's records, for instance. We want to see Deerfield's records, Landmark's records. We want a federal investigation. This abuse has been going on for decades upon decades upon decades. One child I, I represent, who is now an adult, was abused by a teacher of Fezzenden, uh, Mr. Tredenick, and his supervisor was Arthur Claridge, another pedophile. It's, it's ongoing and it's continuous. And, and Claridge is 88, living in Florida. There, nothing's going to happen to this guy, correct? Criminally, at least. Is, that, is the, there anything possible to happen to him? Um, that's my understanding that nothing is taking place. He and already, your abuser is dead, correct? My abuser is dead, but I did have some problems with Claridge as well. With Claridge as well. So, uh, realistically speaking, other than the school coming forward and I assume compensating them for what was done to them, is there anything? Oh, the abuse has to end. Yeah. How do you do think we... it's going on now? Oh, why not? Absolutely, I do. We... Why do you think that, John? Because when I went back there, after the uh, CBS News broke my story, yeah. okay, my, my, my girlfriend took me back uh, to this place thinking that I would get some help, and I was approached by an individual, okay, a school individual, who, um, I, and I'm not homophobic, but I believe he was gay because the way he was acting uh -huh. towards me, yeah. okay, and he, and he walked me through the whole thing and he only cared about me. He didn't care about my girlfriend, right? And, and this is the problem that I have. I don't have, I am not homophobic. We, all my friends have been texting me that you are, right? Okay, they, uh, I have a real problem with homosexuals working an all boys room shower. I have that. Uh, Mitchell, uh, the Globe said they reached out to 224 schools, only 23 replied. Is it ridiculous to assume that the reason why there was 90% non-response was because those schools don't want to disclose what happened there? Is that a ridiculous leap to take? Based on my experience, it's not ridiculous at all. It's, it's, it's let's stick our heads in the sand. Maybe they'll go away. Maybe the investigators will go away. But to, to talk about your earlier point, Claridge left the state. Then some victims may be able to prosecute Claridge criminally if he left the state in a timely fashion. Oh, because fashion. the the statute of limitation. Yeah. But one last thing before we get back to these gentlemen quickly, the, the same article said that there's a roughly 10 percent sexual abuse at some level in K through 12 public schools. If there's that, and I find that to be astonishingly high, and it's probably low, uh, low underestimate because people won't say it. In boarding schools and settings like this, there's every reason to think that it's an even higher incidence, is it not? Of course. Who's watching the supervisors? There's another situation yeah. where the supervisors are not doing their jobs. You have an abuse of power, mm -hmm. you have the cover-up, and you need, you need transparency. Transparency is what it's all about. Mm -hmm. We don't have a huge amount of time. Adrian, what impact do you think this has had on your life in the decades since? Well, I'd, I'd gotten to the point where I'd had enough. And I, I, one March or February day, I packed all my warmest clothes on, and I walked from West Newton, Massachusetts, into Boston. Had no idea where I was going, what I was going to do. Uh, on that walk, I, I raged, I cried. Um, I came to the conclusion that I couldn't trust anybody. Uh, I felt abandoned and unloved by my parents. Um, I, uh, I, I pretty much had a psychological shift where um, I just stopped trying and I, I did not trust authority. I went to two more boarding schools afterwards that I did not 
even try in. Um, I was expelled from both of them for drug use. And you think that's attributed to what you lived through at Fessenden? Yeah, and, and uh, at 16, uh, I ran away from home and lived on the streets for years and years. I had uh, addiction problems in the 80s and 90s. John, I'm fairly short on time. What, what, what impact do you think this from decades ago has had on your life? Uh, I have 100% uh, PTSD disability. Uh, my nightmares are reoccurring. I got to take all kinds of medication. Um, every time I see sex abuse on TV, it um, flashes me back. That's something that happens to all of us PTSD victims that have mm -hmm. child sex abuse. Yeah, it's, uh, it ruined my life. Adrian and John, I appreciate your courage and coming to talk here. And I wish you. you a lot of luck. Thank you so much for having us. And Mitchell, as always. Thank you. Thank you so much for your time. We did invite a representative from the Fessenden School to join us. They sent a statement instead that says, We're deeply saddened and we apologize on behalf of the school to those who were harmed. We hope that you'll find that our recent letter to the community speaks for itself and provides additional background and clarity. In 2011, the school acknowledged and apologized for abuses that took place decades ago and offered counseling to anyone who was harmed. We've acted with compassion and concern for the victims. The school proactively attempted mediation, and we maintain our hope that the victims and their attorney wish to re-engage in mediation. 